Hey guys, it's Bridgette with San Diego Seed Company, and today I'm gonna to talk about rain water harvesting. It's something we do a lot on our farm because we live in a semi-arid location and we pay city water prices for our huge garden. So before I get into the details on that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you can be notified anytime we put out a video. So let's get into it. So this is just one of our many tanks that we have running around the house. Um, this one's actually 205 gallons. It's one of our bigger ones. And honestly, one of these days I'm gonna get a huge one because we get so much rainwater harvesting off of the roof of our house that it makes sense for us because we could really harvest you know, thousands of gallons of water if we, if, we, if we had the capacity to hold it. So this was a very simple system that we actually got and the county had rebate systems uh, in place so that you got some of your money back buying this tank. Depending on where you are in your city, there may or may not be rebate programs, um, but for this tank, it was almost free, which is fabulous. So 205 gallons, what does that mean? How much is that? Well, in a moderate rainstorm, this tank will fill up in about 10 minutes because the surface of our roof is so large, it captures so much water, it all funnels here, and it fills up very quickly. Some key things that you need to know about rainwater harvesting is you will be so surprised how much rainwater you can capture off the roof of your house, the roof of your garage, anywhere. There are calculations online where you can calculate the square footage of your roof and then how much water that will potentially harvest. The big key thing that I always tell people is always plan for this overflowing. So we have this overflow hose here, which is nice because I can just throw it into my driveway. So when this thing becomes full, you can see it's right at the top it just starts to flow out here and flow down the driveway. Now, luckily, because I'm almost always on the farm during a rainstorm, I usually take this hose and I put it on our mango tree. It's really happy because it's in great soil, but also because we use a lot of rainwater to flush out the salts in the soil, which is typical here from irrigation water or tap water. So it's a really good looking mango tree, which is just um, proof that, you know, rainwater really is the best for your fruit trees. When we decided to do rainwater harvesting, there's a lot of considerations that you got to think about. For us, it made sense because we are growing on an acre in the city and we're paying water city prices. That's really expensive, or it can be. We also have over 40 fruit trees, and so we need rainwater to flush out the salts that are going to be present in the irrigation water. So we spent the time, money, and energy building these rainwater harvesting systems because it was worth it for us in our particular situation. You gotta think about it on your end, what makes sense, what doesn't. When you're harvesting rainwater, you do wanna be careful that it's not too close to your house. It doesn't overflow and flood into your house. It's insane how quickly these will fill up and can overflow and become quite a, quite a problem if you're not careful. So it's really important. So on our farm, I think with all of the different barrels and totes that we have, which we've just kind of collected over the years, they're not pretty, they're not fancy. I think we have over a thousand gallons of water holding capacity. Now, how quickly will we use that? Well, we use it pretty quickly because as soon as we get a rainstorm, we'll let these fill up. We make sure that the tops are secure so no critters, animals, or anything are getting in. There's also mosquito screens on the top of it to keep mosquito from laying their larvae in it. But as a general rule of thumb, I wanna use this water very quickly so that it's not sitting there getting stagnant and potentially breeding mosquitoes. So as soon as we have a couple of dry days, I will use this water to deep water all of my fruit trees, my palm trees, my ornamental plants, basically anywhere on the property where I feel like it's not getting enough moisture because we only get nine inches of rain if we're lucky in a year. And I watered it via gravity. So you can tell that this tank is up higher. We did that on purpose so that we have a little bit of gravity so that we can run the water and it's going to flow through the tank, gravity feed, and we can run it down the driveway. There are tons of considerations of where you put it, how close it is to the house, the gravity, all of those things. This is a very heavy um, container, and so you want a secure base for it. That's another consideration. The downside of using rainwater harvesting is, in my opinion, it's not really something that you can efficiently water 
like let's say a vegetable garden with. Um, the, the considerations are, you know, we have a composite roof, which means some yucky things come off the, that roof and ends up in this water. I don't want that on my vegetable plants. Also, because the water is not filtered, uh, I cannot run this through my irrigation. So I cannot pressurize this. There are some systems and people who can build those. We don't have that on our farm. Um, but I, I couldn't hook this up to my irrigation and run it through my drip line. It would clog it up immediately. So it's a lot of manual labor. Now for us, it's a labor of love. I love coming out here, running my hoses, watering stuff. I love the fact that I can turn this on just barely like a drip and I can saturate an area of the garden by leaving it on for a few hours. Um, and I just love the savings in my pocketbook. What we save in watering for the fruit trees because we're watering from rainwater makes sense for us. So just to think about all of this again, big considerations for rainwater harvesting. Make sure you do your research and you know exactly how much water is going to potentially come off your roof because you'll be surprised it's a lot more than you think. Make sure that you have a way for your rainwater tank to overflow and not flood into the house or any other areas of the property that could become ha hazardous. Also know that it's a little bit of work. You've got to be committed to spending Saturday mornings moving hoses around and watering and potentially watering with buckets and things like that. If you enjoy playing in rainwater and you love watering your garden, you'll love this. If that's a lot of work, maybe stick to the irrigation.